What's up my wonderful peeps? It's your boy Sports the Bone here again man. Keeping you informed as per usual. Shout out to all the viewers and subscribers. Yeah man. Yeah man viewers and subscribers. Back at it again. Back on the sports train. Alright so today I am going to take a look at the professional career of Jerome Taylor. A Jamaican and West Indian right arm pace bowler that was extremely skillful with the ball. Taylor was um, feared for his express pace and his ability to swing the ball both ways. The St. Elizabeth native, nicknamed Bobby, stands at 6 feet 1 inch. Fans will remember Taylor for his trademark silky smooth run-up to the crease before delivering the ball at rapid pace. The Jamaican speedster made his Test and ODI debut against Sri Lanka in June 2004. The then 18-year-old pace bowler had just played a couple of games at Jamaica when the West Indies team came calling. Bobby, as he's affectionately called, immediately drew comparison from the likes of West Indies legend Michael Holding, aka the Whispering Death. Taylor's budding career was frequently disturbed by nagging back and knee injuries. So once again, we see where we had a young West Indian pace bowler that was expected to set the world ablaze, set the world alight, but was interrupted on several occasions by um, different injuries. Jerome Taylor will be best remembered for his saucy spell in a test match against England at Sabina Park in 2009. Taylor led West Indies to one of their most memorable victories, ripping through England with a spell of 8 for 85. So that was a hell of a match right there. Taylor actually bowled West Indies to victory, ripping through the entire England batting lineup from the top order right throughout the bottom order. As I said, grabbing 8 for 85. So this was a very outstanding performance from Taylor. So a lot of persons will actually remember the man Bobby for this performance at Sabina Park. In 46 test matches, Taylor took over 100 and 30 test wickets at an average of 34.46. In his injury troubled career, Taylor also managed to, to, to wrap up 5 4 wicket hauls and 4 5 wicket hauls throughout his test career. So there we have it. Um, Taylor's test career wasn't the longest of test careers. He only had 46 matches, but I mean, he was, his talent was there for everybody to see was really sad to know that he was um, really troubled by uh, those knee injuries and back injuries and all of that because he really cut his test career short because I mean Taylor could have been up there amongst the great because we're talking about being able to swing the ball um, into the right hand away from the right hand we're talking about um, his ability to to bow some rapid bouncer we are also talking about his ability to bow some very good um, slow delivery. So Taylor was the complete package. We're talking about one of the smoothest man to get um, to go through the crease when he's about to bowl. The, the long and bursting run up was easy on the eyes. But when Taylor actually reached to the wicket to deliver the ball, we're talking about the gather phase, everything through through the follow through, everything about Taylor was like a was like a machine. It was silky smooth. So, you know, really sad to know that his um, test career was cut short like that. Anyhow, um, Jerome managed to play 90 ODI matches, taking 128 wickets at an average of 29.53. Taylor in ODI cricket took 3-4 wicket haul and 1-5 wicket haul. People will remember that in the 2006 Champions Trophy against Australia, Taylor bowled a rapid spell for the West Indies, actually bowling the Windies to victory, taking an impressive 4 for 49, including a hat trick. So, this wasn't any normal spell, it was actually up against Australia, and he managed to, to finish with figures like 4 for 49, which include, an, um, which include a, a hat trick. And I mean, just, just, just off the top of my head right now, we remember that in that Australian lineup back in 2006 they probably had people still like matthew hayden gail chris we're probably talking about ricky ponting um people like 
Michael Clark probably was just coming through. So they, they actually had a very a pretty good lineup. And for Taylor to actually rip through that lineup like that was very good. I mean, was very impressive. Doesn't necessarily mean that he actually took um Gail Chris Hayden and Ponting for the hat trick, but whatever the case the case was, it was actually impressive because Australia back then was a dominant force in in ODI cricket. So it's really impressive to know that Taylor actually managed to wrap up figures of four for forty nine against them. So yeah man. Um it, it it is also key to note that Taylor was known for his ability to play some shots with the bat. Um, people that actually followed his career will remember that the speedster was capable of playing some of the most delightful shots. We're talking about some cover drive. We're talking about some nice shot over extra cover for six, for four, whatever the case may be. Some straight drive back past the bowler down into the long on or the long off boundary. So Taylor was also um, very handy with the bat. Fans will actually remember that um, run a ball century that Taylor actually made in New Zealand in 2008. So yeah, man, Taylor actually put up a century against New Zealand. I can, I can actually quite, I can actually remember this this match. You know, it was a very good century that 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 he that he managed to chisel out. We're talking about some some very good some very good shot. We're not talking about um baseball cricket where you're just hitting that ball. Talking about getting in line with the ball, playing the ball and its merit. Yeah, so that Taylor actually played a, a, a very a very good innings. And in 2009, leading in two to, in 2008 actually, leading to 2009. Taylor was being looked at as a developing bowling all-rounder. So we can see that he was actually improving on his batting. And it was during this time that he actually made his, his century against New Zealand. And I think he had got a half century further down. So, you know, his batting was coming right along. But there and then he, 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 he was struck down by, I think, I think he was struck down by, by a back injury for a, for a little while. That, that actually hampered his, his development where batting is concerned right there. So, I mean, after suf suffering with countless number of on and off injuries, Taylor called time on his test career in July 2016. We're, and we're talking about after coming back from injuries and trying to um, actually go back into the West Indies team to try and prove himself. But the, the whole injury on the body was, was actually, uh, actually took a toll on him and he had to um, call time on his career in July 2016. So the longer format of the game that we know, it actually drained his body more. So he actually walked away from Test Cricket first. But it was shortly after that he actually walked away from ODI Cricket also. Because, I mean, he wasn't, being, he wasn't able to, to produce um, a, a, at a high level as, as we, we, we had gotten to know um, him. So he actually walked away from ODI Cricket shortly after that. Personally, I was a big fan of Jerome Taylor. His smoothness and effortless bowling technique was easy on the eyes. I must say, it is really sort of sad to see um, how Taylor's career went. He briefly captivated our hearts with some stunning performances and some excellent control with the new ball. I can remember Taylor opening the, new, um, opening the innings with the new ball for West Indies being able to get the ball to move in and a, in to the to the right and away from the left and a, you know taylor was was extremely gifted so i'm really saddened to know that his career was cut down um was actually cut short because of injuries at one point in time taylor was seen as um the man who would actually bring back west indies bowling to their heyday so this is how talented jerome taylor was um, I mean, making his debut at 18 and actually performing well, he was being compared, as I said earlier, to the likes of Michael Holden. And I mean, that in itself is an achievement to be compared to somebody like that, you know. So, I mean, having said all of this, viewers and subscribers, let me know in the comment section how fond were you of Jerome Bobby Taylor. But this is just a short little synopsis of how um, Taylor's career went. And, you know, we, we, we want to discuss what could have happened if it wasn't for, for injuries. So feel free to express yourselves in the comment section. Um, let us know what you think about Jerome Taylor's career. Sports of the Bone, keeping you informed. Please remember to like, share, leave us a comment. If you have not yet subscribed, remember to subscribe to the channel. I'm out. Blessings.